Cynthia, mother of Victor Von Doom, is called out of a trance. She needs to see what her son is up to. It seems he's run into an old friend. Victor and the Thing duke it out, destroying Amara's apartment before clashing in the streets. Amara remembers nothing next, only waking up in a mysterious room. She goes outside to meet up with Victor. He took her here, a remote and safe location within Switzerland, and apologizes. In the eyes of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the world at large, they are now connected. Doom never intended that, but he has inadvertently uprooted her life. Amara says that since he just ruined her life, the least he can do is explain himself. Why is he no longer Dr. Doom? Why is he suddenly so obsessed with replacing Tony Stark? Victor pauses and decides to tell her everything. He tells her how he was a god, how he controlled the entire universe. And then he tells her how he failed. He created a universe in his image, ruled unchallenged and with complete power. And he failed. He was brought down to earth on his knees and decided his entire life, his entire purpose, his never-ending quest for power was all for nothing. So he began a more noble pursuit. A better one, hopefully. One with the goal to protect as opposed to conquer. He first went to Tony Stark because he admired the man. And then, Iron Man fell. Doom knew it was all a sign. A clear path laid out before him. He would become the Iron Man. So that's the story. Amara doesn't take it well. She says that Doom is a monster and that nothing he does now will change that. Victor says that's okay. He's not seeking redemption for his past. He just wants to do good now. Does it not matter or mean something that he's trying? Frustrated, Amara demands to be sent home and for him to leave her alone. He obliges. In Latveria, Maria Hill contacts the Thing and can't believe the hero lost Doom in the middle of a fight. The Thing says he just sort of slipped away, but he isn't done looking yet. He figures that this place will shake out some answers one way or the other. As he finds Doom's lab, the Thing is alarmed as his rocky form begins to crumble. So this is the man that's been giving her son a hard time all these years. Such a naughty boy. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Infamous Iron Man number 3. Well now, I think this series is finally starting to show some interesting colors. Thus far, Iron Man has been alright. It's had some issues getting the ball rolling and it didn't help matters that it sort of spoiled the ending to Civil War 2. But now that we're past its awkward beginning, it's kind of getting pretty cool. As I've said before, though I don't love them killing off Iron Man to do this, I do like how this is sort of a natural direction for Doom's character. I mean, not so much him becoming Iron Man specifically, but him becoming a hero. This goes back uh, several years at this point, starting with Hickman's Fantastic Four, moving into Time Runs Out and Secret Wars. Doom's been on a long and epic journey. Him turning into a hero makes a lot of sense, especially after Secret Wars, where, as this comic shows, Victor was humbled in a very major way. It's something I've criticized Civil War II for not doing a lot of lately. Unlike that story, this story feels earned in a big way, and as such, it's really cool to explore and see Doom, this Doom, after all his development, star in his own series. That's why I really dig this issue. Sure, we got cheaped out again on a fight between Victor and the Thing, but instead we got those flashbacks to Secret Wars, and that's good enough for me. The way those scenes were only done in pencil was a great choice, and it made it clear it was all a distant, foggy memory. Few people on this earth even know what happened, so it's cool to confirm here that Victor is indeed one of those people. That's great, because it not only preserves his character growth, but will inform any interaction he might have with Doctor Strange or various other characters from Secret Wars and Time Runs Out, if they ever turn up again. There are still aspects of this comics art I find lacking. It's really hard to tell what's going on when parts of the thing start falling apart at the end of this comic, and the moment is kind of lost on me because of it. Still, it's a cool issue overall. It shows why this series is worth existing and reading in a big way, and in my opinion deserves an easy recommendation. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. 
Also, if you like Comic Island, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find the link in the video description. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.